What's poppin' nights? It's Sono Kage, otherwise known as the King, and I come to you today with a question. If the tail beasts were alive in our world, what the hell we gonna do to survive? Because we don't have magical ninja fire powers, but we got a lot of firepower. You know what I'm saying? So I decided to make this video when I came back from my little army trip after the discourse start raising a few questions after I start talking about shooting grenade launchers and stuff. And I began to wonder, would our weapons work on the tailed beast? If they came to our world, would we survive? It was super interesting. And yes, this is unscripted, by the way. I did not want to use too much mental power on this one. I just really wanted to start a discussion, see if we could talk about this. If you think my ideas are wrong, debate me. So without further ado, let's get into it. Woo! Don't have time to waste the king is into beast mode. Your ninjas better hide away before I turn the beast mode. Not to win this fairy tale, I got the heat flow. Uh, Pack the lead in the trunks, I got the heat dome. Uh, got the flow going crazy, that's a shuttle clone. I switch it up and interchange it. Yeah, that's how the story goes. Shurigan or Renegon, big one. Either way, you'll stay gone, cause bike gone, take bike gone. Then in my hand, make your all go and run, run. If I just pull that rock, you are so stay in the go cost. Hey, it's a snake one. Fuck around the front of what I breathe with the sample. Hey. Stop with the brakes, I can ape through a prince. Ooh, I'm a king, what you tell me when no prince? Disclaimer, I am not and will not say that I am the utmost expert on military ordnance or firepower. I have only practiced with grenade launchers, 50 cal weapons, and standard military issued weaponry. Other than that, I have no say or no qualifications that say that I am the only one allowed to have this argument. So again, debate me if you think you can, fools! <laughs> God, this is gonna be dumb. But other than that, I think we should get into it starting with the first tail beast. That being Shikaku. And this one is very interesting because Shikaku is a beast made of sand. So when you think about that, you can understand that weaponry that has concussive force or piercing force just wouldn't work at all. So you need something with high heat or high explosive energy to disperse that sand or eventually glass it. So I think with Shikaku, our best bet is a nuke. Now, how many nukes would it take? And let's not question collateral damage here because this is a hypothetical situation and let's not think about the countless amounts of loss of life that would happen in the situation. Now, let's focus on would a nuke actually work on a tailed beast? And if one nuke would work, how many would it take? When you think about it, a tailed beast bomb is comparable to a nuclear explosion or just a high ordinance explosion in general. So when we look at the curvature of this explosion right here that I'm showing you on the screen, you can see that it's fucking massive, right? And just so that we're clear on this, if you expected me to do any level of mathematical knowledge or know-how on any of these explosions, you're goddamn insane. I said to you at the beginning of this video that this is unscripted. I am not doing any math at all. I promise you, none. So, what we're doing here is far more elegant than any mathematical equation would give us. We're shooting nukes at imaginary animals, and we're going to see if they die or not. You understand? <laughs> this sounds so stupid out loud. <laughs> Back to business. So, what I know about sand is that it takes around 3,000 degrees, give or take, to actually turn sand into glass. And what I know about nuclear warheads, from my baseline knowledge of sitting in classes during the army is that they reach about 200 million degrees. So, you know, basic mathematics will um, take that down to Shikaku turn to glass. But we need to know, understand how tall Shikaku is versus the explosion radius of the nuke. And we need to understand this to figure out if we need more than one nuke to actually take down Shikaku. The answer is no, we do not need more than one nuke. Understand this, that Shikaku stands at about 50 meters tall, right? A, a Nuclear explosion has a blast radius of about uh, 590 meters. Um, and basic mathematics would tell us that that means that Chicago turned to glass. <laughs> this is so stupid. The two tails, the, the fire cat. Let's think about that real quick. So speaking literally, I have absolutely no clue if there's any flesh underneath the flames on my tatabi. So we're going to think about this in the same vein as Chicago. That is a beast made entirely of what you see. So sand for Shikaku, fire for Matatabi. And thinking of that, 
I have no clue if we could win. Because sand has the clear and obvious, you know, weakness to fire. I mean, to heat, if we can get the heat hot enough, which we can. But fire, on the other hand, Matatabi burns really, really, really hot. And I think that would be our biggest detriment in this fight. We could use some type of fire suppressant or fire retardant, but we don't have anything that's powerful enough to even really take down the flames of Matatabi. So we might try to use like some type of crop duster filling it with a fire extinguisher or um, the, the solution that's inside of fire extinguishers, but Matatabi would smack us out the sky. We could do absolutely nothing. See, I think we could fill crop dusters with water, but that water might evaporate. There's too many variables in this situation. So let's look at a real world example real quick. Um, don't know if you know about it. That one little forest fire down in Australia that took about a year, a, a year to actually get rid of. It burned at about 46 million acres. And Matsutabi is like that, but alive and can move and shoot the fire at great distances. There's just not much we could do. We lose. It's so unfortunate. So, in my professional opinion, the two tails, that being Matsutabi, could most likely destroy the entire fucking world. Um, so, with that being said, let's move on to the three tails. And the three tails, one of my personal favorite designs, Isabu, um, is the giant turtle looking guy. Which, let's move on to how we would take him down. Isabu is a turtle, meaning that it is very slow. Even in the verse, when it moves, you can see that it is not the quickest of the tailed beast. However, that shell though, that shell though, that shell looks to be the most durable part on it, which also gives me insight to say that underneath the shell is very soft, supple meat that we could just tear into if we get past that shell, which I absolutely believe that our weaponry could, any army's weaponry could, we all have armor piercing rounds, especially our tanks. Tanks have a lot of AP shots, which are again, armor piercing shots that come from a goddamn tank. Isabu might be able to destroy a few tanks, but not all of them. We have too many, we have a surplus of tanks. I have fixed a few tanks myself, and let me tell you, they're very, very durable. I think Isabu would go down eventually. And that means the humans are up 66%, hell yeah. As long as the two tails don't come over, we have a really good chance of beating any tailed beast that comes our way. So, let's move on to the four tails that, and that being Sun Go. Cool. Oh God. Okay, so this one right here is one that had your boy scratching his head for a good minute because it's a giant magma spewing gorilla that ain't slow because it's also a goddamn gorilla that spews magma. That's a lot. And I do believe that our memory could eventually break the beast's skin because it's just a gorilla. That spews magma, you know. The magma part is the part that really scares me, <laughs> to be honest. Because, let me give you a brief rundown on magma. Magma's hot. It's, it's very, very hot. That might be an understatement, honestly. Because magma's not just hot. It's ungodly hot. I've never seen magma before in my real life. And I never want to. Because I'm not really good with that type of heat. I don't think anyone's really good with that type of heat. And this monster can spit it. It's a giant magma spewing gorilla. What can we do? Other than that, I think that we wouldn't win. So we have two options in this fight. Option one, we could take the beast down before it has a chance to spew magma from its mouth, which, you know, on all odds of likelihood is impossible. Or option two, the beast spews magma from its mouth, melts our weaponry and our tanks and kills every single one of us. Which, you know, all together, far more likely. So, with that being said, I think we should move on to the next beast. To the Five Tails. That being Kokowo. And this one is actually super interesting because Kokowo is a beast that has the ability to utilize steam as a weapon. And you wouldn't think that'd be deadly, but it is. Steam can kill a lot of people. And thinking about the beast's speed also, that's also a really deadly factor of the creature. Because it's a horse, and horses, if you didn't know, are notoriously fast as f Yes, horses are fast. Essentially, I think this beast would outrun most of our tanks, outrun most of our bullets, outrun most of our ordnance, which means we don't have many opportunities to attack it. However, with that being said, steam is very deadly. That is true. But we don't need to be there to attack it. 
Steam's only really deadly to humans. Machinery, it might knock it out of service after a, a while, but we have opportunities to attack where we don't have to be there. And the beast is a beast. It's going to get tired eventually, right? So when it tires out, we, could, we don't have to send men piloted drones. These drones are automatic. They could drop the ordinance that we need them to drop that could take down the beast eventually because steam is deadly to people and living organisms, not as deadly to machines. God, this is such a dumb argument. <laughs> Why am I debating killing innocent creatures most likely? Oh, okay. So what I'm getting at is we could probably kill it in its sleep after we figure out how deadly it is. We most likely wouldn't send any living person to deal with that. So you know what? Humans up, we're winning. Okay, I'm losing brain cells. But we can move on to the next beast real quick. That being Saiken. And Saiken is a giant slug. Bro, we could use salt. Like, no cap. Like, I know this sounds stupid, but salt. Salt the beast. We can fill grenades with... We can fill grenade launchers or bullets there with paint and chalk. Why not fill them with salt? Same thing with tanks, man. We can fill those with salt. So they explode and shatter the beast with salt. Yes, it has acidic bubbles that it shoots as a defense. In the Naruto world, they just have throwable knives. We have bullets. And I mean, we popped bubbles as a kid. Let's just pop the bubbles before they get to us. And I know that sounds crazy. Maybe the bullets will melt when they touch the acidic. Well, use plastic. Come on now. Like, there's a lot of choices, a lot of options that we have. And I don't think Saiken would do anything against us, man. We destroy the giant slug beast. Seriously, let's move on. And this next one we have is the Seven Tails, that being Chomei. And I'm serious, Chomei would probably destroy us. It flies. We have a lot of anti-air weaponry, right? We can definitely take it out of the air eventually, maybe. But the problem with that is, if it were to attack, we don't see it. It attacks with wind, and it's wind that can slice through mountains. So I have full confidence that it can take down any metal weaponry that we may have. That being tanks, that being all that stuff, that's like tanks and bullets might not even reach, to be 110% honest with you. And if the bullets do reach, would they do enough damage considering that it's an armored beetle? And I mean like genuine armor, not like bug armor. <laughs> like it's, it's a lot to consider. We wouldn't even know what's attacking us. So it's kind of scary to think about. And it's also fast as hell, man. Like have you played against it or played it in the games? It attacks so quick. It's hard to pin down and nukes would probably be our only viable option. But it's also fast. Nukes will be slow in comparison. What are we going to do? <laughs> but if we could tire it out, if we could survive until its assault, assault is over, there's a good chance we could win. But there's so many ifs in that equation, man. There's so many ifs. The only real defense we may have is our anti-aerial weaponry. But... That's usually used to uh, attack things with very predictable trajectories. Chomi doesn't, Chomi's not predictable. I think we should move on to the eight tails at this point. And honestly, I'm losing my mind because the eight tails is a giant squid and stronger than the seven tails. So what could we do? A lot. We could do a lot, actually. Sasuke proved that we can slice through its skin, which leads me to believe that it has weak flesh. So with that being said, tanks, insanely viable option. Any type of weaponry, insanely viable. I'm pretty sure any one of our bullets could pierce its flesh. Might not do much damage, but it eventually will poison it. We have a lot of different options to take down the eight tails. Also, I would have to say, even 50 caliber round of ammo would be enough to break its skin and pierce its skin. So, like, huge viable option, to be honest. So, essentially, what I'm trying to say is, the eight tails gets fucking destroyed. There's nothing it could do to stop us. I mean, it would destroy a lot of us as well with a Telebeast Bomb because it can shoot those things off pretty fast. But the second we get in or it gets tired or it slows down because it's running out of chakra, dead. Eight tails done got 
ain't got nothing on us. You feel me? This idea gets dumber by the second. Let's go to the Nine Tails, the roughest and toughest of the Nine Tailed Beast. God, he gets destroyed. And I legit mean destroyed. And it hurts me to say that because I'm a huge Korama fan. I put him as a main figure in every single what if on the show. I don't use him as just a power. I love Korama. I love his character. But there's a time when Naruto punched him and it actually hurt the beast. And I'm just thinking, if a punch can hurt, even from Naruto, it would be just destroyed, man. Especially by like 50 caliber round ammo or tank shells. And, and it just sucks because I love Kurama. So like the second it gets overconfident, or the second it focuses on just one target, destroying that tank in front of it, the tank behind it's gonna unload. It's gonna get hurt and eventually slow down and die. And with that being said, I think this personally was one of the most conclusive, well thought out, well edited videos ever on this topic. So if you have any further debates, please come at me in the comments. And I believe that we can talk about this. We probably got to talk about the Ten Tails, don't we? We got to talk about the Ten Tails, don't we? Okay, so the Ten Tails, the culmination of all the other tailed beasts has an insanely hard shell that not even the other tailed beast bombs could do any damage to. So our nukes, pointless. Our tanks, pointless. Hell, our guns are pointless. So let's not forget the fact that it can also raise its own army to fight our army. And each one of those strong enough to cut through steel. I, I just can't see any way we win. Sorry. And I really can't. Like, I can't. I can't. I can't keep this video going any much longer than it already is. I'm losing brain cells at the second, but this was fun. It was fun at least, right? And my knights, to you, I say thank you for watching this content. I love and I'm grateful for all your support. Other than that, I do want to thank uh, Renalcia and Shadow Tracker for the idea. They were the ones who rose it up in the comments and I thought it was super interesting. I want to go off on it. Also, my knights, you beautiful bastards, if you watch Swag Kage, who is, in my opinion, one of the devout little debaters of Naruto topics and controversies, I want to say, let's not spam him, but let's send this video to him. I want to see if he can make a more complete and compiled list of if we could be any of the Telbeast on this list, or even just prove me wrong. I dare him. I double dog dare him. Also, I double dog dare you, my knights. Could you prove me? God, I'm sorry. This is dumb. But yeah, I think it'll be fun to see if we can get like a good topic of discussion going on. If Americans could survive these giant feats of nuclear destruction that is the tailed beast. Other than that, not even Americans, just the world in general. But other than that, I think it's time for me to go. Oh no, Kage, out. Peace. Nobody speak, nobody get choked. If you run the home, it's gonna get smoked. No time for the lame ass jokes. I'm the GOAT. You a gringo when that story's been told. Been so. I make money moves controlling every view. Oh no. You got hell of proof, but no one's helping you. What's wrong? Now you on your own, you really want to smoke. Oh no. Chico really done it wrong. What's wrong? The hello meta in the sky list, bro. Wow. Keep talking crazy, I might go post though. Yeah. Always trouble when they go too far. Yeah. Nobody messing me familiar. Yeah. Ah. Father, father.